I recently did an install and review of the GGHD, a Game Gear consoleizer from Gamebox Systems. I ended up giving it a negative review because I ran into some pretty major issues during my testing. The two main issues that I was seeing while I was testing the GGHD were these weird color bars in the video output and an issue that I'm calling the rainbow screen of death where the entire console would lock up after you powered it on. And these issues appeared in a second GGHD in a second Game Gear that I received from Postman, the lead developer of Gamebox. Postman saw my review, and after talking with a couple of other mod developers, came up with some fixes that we can try. So let's see if we can turn our GGHD into a stable, usable, beautiful Game Gear consoleizer. Gamebox has updated their GGHD installation instructions to include a troubleshooting section that covers both of the issues that I ran into. But before we can do anything, we need to take this GGHD apart, down to the motherboard. Let's start with Gamebox's fix for the random color bars, or what they call artifacts. First, we need to find the wire that we connected from the GG clock pad to the clock crystal of the Game Gear. According to Gamebox, a possible difference in the original Game Gear's manufacture may result in some consoles having a different clock impedance or phase shift. The solution is to make this wire longer. They recommend starting with a 2 inch long wire and increasing the wire in 1 inch increments if the issue doesn't disappear. So that's what I did. I swapped out the original clock wire for a 2 inch long strand of this 30 gauge wire wrapping wire. I tested the console and after a few minutes I could still see the color bars. So I tried a 3 inch wire and a 4 inch wire all the way up to the recommended maximum 8 inches. And while the color artifacts never completely disappeared, the flickering was greatly reduced and the time between the flickers was longer. Postman reached out on Twitter and mentioned that I should try replacing the capacitors that I removed when I was installing the GGHD. Thankfully I still had those capacitors lying around, so I resoldered all the capacitors according to the console 5 wiki. And after all that effort, I think the results speak for themselves. An interesting byproduct of adding all the capacitors seems to have fixed the rainbow screen of death issues, at least for the time being. There is a downside though to adding all those capacitors. I noticed that with all the capacitors reinstalled, I could no longer turn off the console with the power button. I could just unplug the USB cable every time I want to shut off the GGHD, but that's kind of janky. Postman recommended that I remove the capacitors one at a time to see if I could find a balance between the stable video output and being able to power off the console. I was expecting to have to remove a few of these capacitors, but after removing C68, the image was still stable and I could turn the console off from the button again. Well, even though my rainbow screen of death issue seems solved, let's at least check out what Gamebox recommends for fixing it. According to Gamebox, there are three possible causes. Scenario A is incorrect or poorly connected wiring to pins M3, M4, or M5. We can check this by looking at the wires connected between the M3, M4, and M5 pads on the bottom of the GGHD board to the Game Gear motherboard. Mine matches the diagram on page 22 of the GGHD instructions, but if you want to be sure, you can use a multimeter to test the continuity between the GGHD pads and the pads on the Game Gear. Scenario B is that H-Sync or V-Sync may not be fully connected at the castellated edge. We can check this by looking at the soldering between the Game Gear screen pins and the castellated pads on the GGHD. This is harder to verify visually than the wiring from Scenario A, so using a multimeter to test continuity is the best option. Scenario C is dirty or damaged pins on the Game Gear cartridge or the cart connector. I think this one is self-explanatory. Make sure you're using cartridges that have clean pins. You can use a pink eraser to clean them if they don't look clean. You can try to clean the cartridge slot pins, but this is easier said than done since the slot pins are hard to access when the slot is soldered onto the board. Now that I have a working GGHD, here are my final thoughts. If I wasn't able to get the GGHD working with the updated instructions from Gamebox, I was prepared to go the nuclear option and use a replacement Game Gear motherboard from SYF. SYF had mentioned that certain original Game Gear motherboards have similar flickering issues with certain aftermarket Game Gear LCDs, and that these issues can be resolved by using one of their replacement motherboards. 
Thankfully, I didn't need to use one of those replacement motherboards to get my GGHD working. Not because I didn't want to, I really did. Those boards look really awesome. But I didn't want my recommendation for fixing the GGHD to be just spend more money and buy a replacement motherboard. Besides, the process for installing one of those SYF motherboards is pretty intense. You need to desolder the ASIC from the original Game Gear motherboard and resolder it onto their board. And I would have had to redo all of the wiring because the signal pads on the SYF board are different from a stock Game Gear motherboard. Either way, I want to give a huge shout out to SYF for sending me some of their replacement boards, even though I didn't use them. You can check out their store in the link in the video description. One thing I wanted to mention is that I was still getting flickering in the EverDrive menu. It doesn't happen all the time, and it doesn't happen in the games that load from the EverDrive, but if you're constantly switching games, you might see flickering in the EverDrive menu. With that being said, do I recommend the GGHD now that I've fixed the flickering and the rainbow screen of death issues? Yes and no. I can't really recommend it if you're expecting a robust consoleizer with all the issues iron out. Sure, some people are gonna install this and not have any problems at all, but judging by the amount of people in Gamebox's Discord that are also having problems, it's not guaranteed to work on the first try. But if you have the patience for troubleshooting issues, then I think the GGHD is a good option for a Game Gear consoleizer. The install is fun, and the audio and video output are great. If you enjoyed this series on the GGHD, then you might like this video about the GBHD Advance, which is Gamebox's Game Boy Advance consoleizer. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.